Hello and welcome to Ben Rosser's Conservatorium of Audio. I'm Ben Rosser and today we're going to be taking a look at warping in Ableton Live 8. We're going to take a look at a couple of different examples. The first one is just a simple drum loop and we're also going to take a look at some drums and bass guitar that I recorded a couple of weeks ago. It was a fairly rushed recording so it's a little bit rough and gives us something good to work with. So we're going to start off by getting our first drum loop loaded up. I'm going to be using a good old Amen drum loop. And if we have a look at the waveform on this one, you'll notice that a lot of the drum hits aren't actually falling on the beat, which can be good if you want a little bit of swing in things. But for example, if you wanted to chuck a copy of the Amen loop in with a trance track or a house track or something that is fairly on the beat and fairly accurate, even drum and bass, then you may find it mightn't fit all that well and it may sound slightly out of time. So there is a couple of ways that we can deal with this. We can do it manually or automatically. And if we do it automatically, there is a couple of different ways we can do it. So we'll go through all of those. If we wanted to do it manually, the easiest way is just to zoom in and we can see where Ableton has located all of the transients in the sound. And it's a simple matter of grabbing hold of each of these and just dragging those into their respective beats like so. As you can see, Ableton's getting all of that locked in for us so that it's going to be nice and on the beat. For something as simple as this, that is a little bit too time consuming and doesn't necessarily provide any better results than doing it the automatic way. So... The first way we can do it is just by right clicking and going to quantize settings. As we can see, we've currently got it to quantize to the current grid. I'm just going to select 1 16th note to get it to quantize all the audio to the 16th note and hit OK on that one. And as we can see, Live's done a pretty good job of locking all of those transients straight into the beat for us. So if we have a listen to that one, You can hear that there's no real artifacts in the sound as a result of the warping and Live's done a pretty good job of keeping it tight for us. You may find if you're working with something a little bit more complex you might start to lose some of the quality of the audio. So the easiest way to fix that is just to select the high quality option in our sample view. And you've also got a few different warp modes which you can choose. Beats tends to be the best one for a drum beat or a loop such as this and can tend to give the best results. However, as we'll see with our next example, it doesn't always give the best results, especially when we're working with something like the bass guitar. So there is another automatic way of being able to warp audio, which is a little bit different to the way we've done it here. So what we might do is we'll just unwarp this and just go warp to this BPM from here, which automatically takes it back to the original. As we can see there, again if we zoom in you can see that the transients are again out of time with the, the beat. So what we can do is open up our groove pool, which is one of the new features of Live 8, and we can go into our groove library and we can find one of our quantized grooves. Again, we're going to quantize it to 16th notes as that's the smallest division in this particular beat. So we'll get the 16 quantize and just drag that one into the groove pool. And just widen this up a bit so we can see all of our options. And we're just going to drag that one straight onto our clip. And even though you can't see it being quantized in the wave view, if we play that one... One of, one of the good things about using a groove is the ability to easily modify it and put it on several different clips and any modification you make to the groove automatically updates all of the clips, which can be very handy. We've got a couple of different options. We've got our overall amount of all our grooves, so we can adjust how much all of our grooves are affecting the clips that they're linked to. We can adjust how much it's quantizing 
this particular groove that we've got on our Amen loop. We can also adjust timing, randomness, and velocity in there as well. So if we wanted to add a little bit of extra movement, we can do that as well. So we'll get a little bit more into depth with the grooves when we look at them specifically in our upcoming free groove tutorial. So we'll see a bit more about how those work. So that's our two automatic options for being able to easily quantize a clip. As you can see, either right clicking and go into quantize settings or just going to quantize. You can also use the control use shortcut there. Or you can use the groove pull and add one groove to one or more clips. So depending on exactly what you're doing, there's a couple of different options there. With the next bit of audio we're going to look at, we'll just get rid of our Amen clip there. Just chuck another audio channel in. We'll get rid of this MIDI channel. And we'll just grab hold of our audio. So we've just got a simple bounce of all the drums that we recorded and a simple bounce of all of the bass that we recorded. So all we're going to do is we're just going to grab hold of these guys and we'll drag those into the arrangement view. If we have a bit of a listen to those, You can hear Live's doing a pretty bad job of trying to get that one sorted out for us. So all we're going to have to do with this one is clean it up manually. So first thing we'll do is we'll just mute our bass for the moment. Just go into our drums clip. And the very first thing we're going to do is get Live to set the very start of the clip on the very first beat. We won't worry about the count in for the moment as we're not going to be recording over the top of this right now. So. So if we have a look in our segment BPM, we can see what Live has actually done is it has guessed that the tempo of this particular beat is double what it actually should be. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to bring that down to the tempo it was recorded at, about 88 BPM. And we're also going to bring down our master tempo to match that so that it's not going to be warping it too far out from where it should be. So if we have a listen to that one now. So we've got that a little bit tidy now. We'll just turn on our high quality mode for this one as well, just to get a little bit of a better sound out of it. And we're also just going to and we're also just going to go into our quantize settings. And again, we're going to quantize this to 1 16th. So if we go in here, we can see Live's done a pretty good job of this. However, there is still some warp markers left over from when it warped it previously. So we'll just quickly go through this clip and delete any of those that we come across. You can tell which ones those are because they're a square box without the point on them. As you can see, we've got this one here sitting over the top of the one below it so we'll just delete that and it's important to do this otherwise you may find that you get some strange artifacts happening in the sound so just delete that one fix that bit up 